Today's episode, we're going to jump forward just a few more years from what I normally used to working on. Got myself a River Rossi, a red box set. These are supposed to be the good ones, they tell me. Going to do the Blue Goose, Adjacent and Topeka and Santa Fe's Streamlined Hudson. We're going to take this thing apart, get into it, show you how to lube it up, what it looks like on the inside of it, and just get our learn on about it. Hello, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Picked this little beauty up at the hobby shop that I used to work at because we'll look at it. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to look? It's nice. It's it's blue. Beep. Powder. Powder. Powder blue. <laughs> Got my steam garb on today because we're doing a steam locomotive. Let's get into it. Take a look at this little beauty here. Real pretty. One of the uh, nicer locomotives that I've got there in my collection. Probably because it's spending most of its life in a box. Because, you know, that's where they all, that's where your nicest ones are at. Don't even look at them real hard. This here from a distance, when I looked at it, I thought it had a big old scratch going down the side. And then I looked at it a little closer, and that's just the rivets for the slope of the coal tender. All the nice pretty handrails on it. Oh, sure. This silly thing. What in Lord's name am I supposed to do with that? How do I pull anything with that? Damn you, River Rossi. I didn't even notice that. Well, shoot. <laughs> That's your pisser. I've been staring at this thing for just a little bit. Figuring out how to take it apart, and I think I got it figured out. Got me my paint cup here to put the stuff in. I'm going to take this trailing truck off and this lead truck. They got a screw. It's down under here. I did everything right today. I vacuumed the floor real good, and I vacuumed the desk, you know, for case those parts go a zinging off. Emptied the garbage can in case something fell in there. I must really like this locomotive or something like that to go through all that. Sure, front truck, rear truck, yeah. Then it exposes us to these and this. Oh, I'm gonna try that. I sure hope the steam chests stay on. I don't like these. Where's my other? There he is. These, these are better for digging out the little screws. Yep. Oh, there's one. Phillips back under here. One screw. Uh, two screws. Got to get in it. Now, if I guessed right, this might come out. Might, might come out. Might come out. It looks like these plastic hand, these, well, these metal hand railings are going to have to come out. Because it's definitely going between the body. Oh, what do we got to do here? Who did this to me? I can see that they're bent under right under here. Do I got to straighten those to get it out? Seems dangerous. Yeah, that's the secret, all right. These have got the old t twist once, twist twice, twist three times. Going on up in here. It probably, oh God, that's gonna suck putting back in. Oh man, fight it, fight it. You can do it, come on, out, out, out. A little more, there it is, all right. I see a big honker right there. Is that going to take off the bottom of the gear case or is it going to take? Oh, it's too small. I can see that already. The this, yeah, here. The, ah, oh, what? One drive gear? Hey, River Rossi. Okay, that's, that's fine, but I still, I want the whole, I want the whole thing. I want to see the motor. Are we even recording any of this? Oh, sure. I'm going to put this back in because I know the wheels. I don't, I don't need this flopping in the, in the wind right now. Front nose is loose. It just wants to be a little, a little tough. Okay, I can, I understand that. You know, I don't want to break it. We're just seeing here. It's really, really close. I mean, things, things are loose. Well, I managed to pull this off. Glued on there just a little bit. But you guess, I just come in here and, aha. Because the motor is just a little bit wider than this area right here. So a guy gets a little nervous. But it it uh, it came out. And we got this wire going up to the headlight. And this front end here, it, it pops out. Oh, yeah. So you can do a bulb replacement right there. And I see we got some screws that are holding in the weight. So I got to see how everything works and just take it all apart. It's got to all be taken apart. Just because I gotta, I gotta know. Oh, yeah. 
This regular screw must be holding in the headlamp assembly. It's got better ideas than coming out. It doesn't, the screw, the lip of the screw, it's not deep enough to get a good bite. Ah, you rotten. Who does stuff like that? Honestly, there ain't a lot to get to service in here. Worm gear, small can motor. This is, uh, it's about as simple as a guy could make it. Got a screw right there. I bet you that'll pull off that steam chest, which of course I, I don't want to do. Well, I wish there was more to this locomotive than this. It looks, it looks like there's a lot going on, but there ain't. Guess I'm never going to get that weight out. Cab down inside there. I can see that it's glued. You know, you know here's the seam. And I thought maybe it would come out or something, but it's it's got a pin and it's glued. So that ain't coming off. Headlight ain't coming out. I want to wash this body. What do I have to do? Not going to happen. This motor, it's got a, oh yeah, a little plastic clip there. Here. Oh, now the other one clipped back up, didn't it? Well, is it the same back here? This is so simple. These engineers, I don't know if I want to like them or not. Another black clip. Oh, I like the external bearings on the motor. That's neat. Instead of being internal. See this draw bar here. It picks up power from the tender. So this assembly, they mean it. Everything is in there, soldered up. And then this fella here, it's getting its juices from these two wheels. Because I can see the traction tires are right there. And it's all riveted together. They just don't want, they don't want you taking this one apart too much. This is about all we get. Let's stop real quick for fun fact number one. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe's 3460 class of locomotives. Built in 1937 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. These were a 464 Super Hudson type of lo locomotive. These were built for service, passenger service. Mainly used between Chicago, Illinois, and the La Junta. La Junta? Jun Jun out in Colorado. This area was a fairly flat area on the AT and SF's route, which was well suited for these smaller Hudsons. When they did have a couple hills they had to pull, they had a helper locomotive through on to help tug them up some of the bigger stuff. These locomotives were fitted with roller bearings on all of their axles on the on the locomotive and the tender from a Gothenburg Sweden company known as SKF bearings. Seems they also had these things called stack extensions. The, they could lift the height of the smokestack up and down by air pressure. Helped increase draft through the firebox. And it also got the smoke higher up off the, off the, so it didn't <laughs> out the passenger cars so much. Well, I guess since we're here, I can't open up this can motor to service the brushes. We could put a little oil in it though. Just a little taste, just, just a touch, just a peck. A little bit less than too much going down in there. Over here, a little bit up on the front of it. That's all she can have. We got these bearings holding on to this armature shaft. Very neat, simple design. Put a little here, put this little bearing back on. I kind of like that. Makes it more meatier. It's got some beef to it. I don't know why they didn't stand it straight up and down. Would have been easier to get out of the body. Interesting indeed. Get that clip back in there. She snaps in. Oh yeah. Golly, this is simple. Yeah, I was in the wrong spot. God. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Grease that's on this gear in there. It looks pretty good. Synthetic multi-purpose super lube. This is going to be a little tougher to lube that up and spin it. Can't get a hold of anything to do it. Roll it over with this toothpick. That's helping. Yes. Don't want too much in there because it's just going to slob around. Now I guess I got to bolt this weight back up. Put this shell back on. Then we'll take this apart down here. We can get in there and lube up the wheels in there. Check that gear. Man, this is, this is easier than a damn Tyco to work on. Holy moly. That is just the silliest, silliest way to put things in. I tell you. Put this front screw back in. Couple of rear screws. I'm gonna have to glue this side back on. Dang it. They just don't make them like they used to. This tender here, 
gorgeous as all get up. I want to wash the body though. We got to clean up these wheels. Pull this pin out right here. Just a little tiny standard screwdriver. Unscrew this pin. Do one of these little numbers. That's what we got on the inside. I'll probably sit here off camera with my fiberglass pencil that you can get from the Amazon. And I'm gonna just kind of do this to all these wheels. Now, of course, only one side is picking up and they're insulated you know, from each other on these metal axles. I could take a voltmeter, put it into horseshoe mode and see which side is the one that's picking up the juice. I should just do that. So these things get their juice off of one side. We're gonna go over here, horseshoe mode. Picks up here, is it this one? This side, yes. So we wanna make sure that this side, the wheels are, oh, see oh, you know, what's going on here? Oh, sure, because it doesn't got a pickup on it. Pick it up from these four wheels right there. We want them all clean, but we're gonna spend some extra, extra attention to these ones. Got these wheels all shined up and I want, I want these pickups to be as clean as possible too. Just gonna get down here and give them all the opportunities that they deserve to, to be clean. Four pickups, so make sure you do this four times. Body's good, I'm gonna leave this coupler alone because it's stock, it's original. That's probably the European markets right there. I don't, I don't know. Looks like there's a screw down here under the bottom. You could take off and convert it. I wonder if the box has got, what do they call that? See, they got this fancy, we got this red box here. And then uh, right there, RL1420. And I'm not gonna be able to know because I can't read Italian. Shoot, that's what I get. I wonder if the thing has got, why would they, why would they send it over here with all of this? Oh, sure, see, I could have read how to take it apart if I could read the thing, the Italian. Yeah, there's an oiling schemat. Oh, over here, this is in, yeah, well, look at that. Now that I look at it, it is in English. Strip off cab and front hand grabs. Nicest box I've ever had. Look at that. Holy moly. I don't know what a guy's got to do. 1998. Put this little feller back on. There's a slot. There's a slot. There's a tab. In case you got busy and forgot when you took it apart. That happens sometimes. Put this pin back in here with our little regular screwdriver. I'm going to give these a little drinky. Down under here. Just the littlest of bit. We gotta do this 12 times. 10, 11, 12. Sure, that's all serviced up now. Anchins of Topeka and Santa Fe, they, they'd ordered five of these locomotives. First one, the 3460, that's the one that got painted up to look like the Blue Goose Streamlined. Even though it was the first one ordered, it was the last one delivered in 1937 because the extra time it took to do the streamlining on it. They made, made it bigger, it was heavier. Uh, did it do any good? No, it was the only streamlined steamer Santa Fe ever had. The 3461, it set a world record. Longest run by a steam locomotive without having any maintenance performed to it whatsoever. It did the complete run from Los Angeles to Chicago, Illinois, 2,227 miles. Only had to stop five times for refueling, putting on some more stuff, more water and more. They were oil burners initially. So that's not too bad. It showed with the new SKF roller bearings in them, it showed that these locomotives could actually compete against the diesel electrics that were starting to choke them out. They were being killed off by the diesel electrics. Out of the five locomotives that were made, only one remains, 3463. It's on a static display down in Topeka, Kansas. Got a pretty paint job, but unfortunately it's sitting outside. It doesn't even have a cover over it right now just to keep the sun off of it. So it's gonna, it's gonna fade after a little bit. Dang it, dang it. Hopefully my glue is set. The sideboard here, yup. So we gotta get in under here. We're gonna give it the maintenance that it hasn't had in its entire lifetime. I don't, I don't think this thing's been ran. It's kind of what I'm a thinking. 
What are these? What is that? Why is it in there? What does it do? Is it just some spacer? Oh, these are the, these are the pickups. The rubbing on the inside of the wheel right here. Brings the juice into the frame. Sure, that's what they're doing now. Well, they seem to be rubbing. So we're picking up on the inside of this flange right here. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I can give all these just a little taste. A little bit less than too much. He's got plungers in them doing their thing. Yep. And this looks like the, oh, there's gears crawling up and down inside there. I can see them. They're two or three deep in there. Grease will get you a long way. I don't got to go insane on it or nothing like that. Get our cover put on. I almost got to wait until you put the trucks in because all these holes here, I believe they got to line up. Front truck. They got to change screwdriver heads on me. Get this mounted up on that tab. Yes. Eyeball that, make sure it's straight. It can be put on a little on the crooked side. These guys, they'd like to have a little grease down on these axle bosses. These guys here are open, so they're quite easy to get to. Light oil, LaBelle 108. Oh, that one got a little bit too much. If it moves on the side, gotta give it a little bit of light oil. You need to give one of the smaller tip on it because this one's it really puts it out. Now these little railings that go on the back right there. This is the top. This is the bottom. It's got this crazy hook there, that curly cue, that whoopee woo kind of thing. I'm gonna straighten it out best I can. And that's going to ease this reassembly process back. I probably probably don't need to do that. I just did it anyway. So that's there. This is gonna come around. See, I don't have to fight it so much putting it back together. I can bend the wire back over myself. Put that in. There he is down there. Give it just a little taste, a little love. There, see, liking it. In and around and down and up and around. Give it just a little a little something, something down there, see? And it's it's not gonna go anywhere. That is, that's as much as we can service it up. This body's so clean, I don't, I don't need to do anything to it. Oh, there. So, time to get her up on the track and see what she looks like. It does make for a good looking model, I do admit. But it is, it's not the quietest thing. Here, I'll be quiet, shh, listen, shh, quiet, shh, shh, listen. That's five volts. Pushing out a, oh God, what is that? I don't even know. That's like 0.25 of an amp. So it's definitely a prime candidate for a DCC, you know, if you like doing things like that. Let's put the coals to her a little bit. Sure, I wish that it was quieter, I guess. It's just me. I suppose it's good at picking these switches. This had a very particular set of passenger cars that it that it pulled with it. Maybe I can look them up or something like that. But that is a nice, nice little runner, newer River Aussie for you right there. These are made for passenger service. The first passenger train that they used was called the Scout, going between Los Angeles and Chicago, Illinois. There were six of them, six complete passenger sets and engines. And they would just, you know, take off over here and go, and this would take off over here and go. And they kept doing this. The Scout began service in 1916. And its last run was in 1948 after World War II. Apparently the public was getting tired of these old fashioned heavyweight trains and them Pullman berth sleepers and the recliner style seats for sleeping in. They wanted something a little better. Then next came the Chief. It was operating as an all first class heavyweight train since the 1920s. 1938, it got the streamlined update to it. Shiny, stainless steel and things like that. The passenger train that the Blue Goose pulled looked the exact same as all the other passenger trains. They'd never painted any cars to match the blue, dark blue color that the Blue Goose had. In 1936, the Super Chief 
it was introduced. All updated, all fancy, and it became the one that all the movie stars wanted to be on. And then, you know, eventually the Super Chiefs ended up getting pulled by the War Bonnet styled F units that the Santa Fe had that we were all very, very, very familiar with. One of the most famous trains that are out there. The Chief, Super Chief, whatever it was being called, the passenger service the Santa Fe offered between LA and Chicago, Illinois, discontinued in either 1968 or 1971 when Amtrak took it over. So that was the death of Santa Fe doing passenger service. Depending upon who you ask on the Google machine, somewhere between 68 and 71. Ugh. Damn jet airliners anyway. Took all the fun away. <laughs> hey, look at this. Stuck in a package. It's the coupler, the horn hook to swap that out. I found it hiding over here. I thought it was somebody's stash. So, <laughs> that's my journey learning about the Blue Goose. The, the Streamline Santa Fe Hudson, the only one that they ever made. I've enjoyed putting this video together. I hope you guys have enjoyed it also. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Good night to y'all. Bye-bye.